Recently, in the last several days, I had one of the greatest experiences of my life as I went and saw my favorite film of all time in a movie theater through the IMAX format for the first time. That film we are talking about today is Interstellar. In this video, I am going to analyze why Interstellar, to me, is the greatest single piece of cinema ever created. I have watched so many movies at this point in my life, and there is only one that for as long as I breathe might only ever be the one. And it is the one we are talking about today that Christopher Nolan gave us all those years ago as we now celebrate its 10th anniversary. As I make this video, I understand that there might be some inherent bias to the things I say, but this movie is truly special to me in every way possible. Christopher Nolan's Interstellar invites us to ask the most profound questions about humanity, the future of planet Earth, how we perceive themes of love, family, pain, grief, but also Nolan's strongest area of storytelling, which is the concept of time. He blends all these things together through some of the most complex efforts of storytelling I have ever seen, along with its breathtaking visuals, mind-bending concepts of science, while also creating an unforgettable cinematic experience. Interstellar isn't just a movie that explores the possible extinction of humanity as it faces an ecological and environmental collapse on itself. It doesn't just explore the world of science and how it uses it to establish the characters of the movie finding a new place for humanity to live on, but it also is a film that explores the emotional experiences of the characters it follows in a cautionary tale about the human condition, the need of cooperation, but also the emotional drive for survival and love in the face of overwhelming odds. That right there, the last part of that description I just laid out, is why this film is so special to me and why it is as powerful as it is. Through and through, Interstellar is a human story. Every possible aspect of the human existence is comprised in this one film through the amazing screenplay that Christopher Nolan and his brother Jonathan Nolan were able to write. What also makes this movie even bigger for me nowadays is knowing that recent family tragedy in my life has struck a chord with how I perceive the film and how it deals with many of the themes I just mentioned that I can now let all that out when I see this in my own emotion. As I sat there watching it on that big IMAX screen, I cried my eyes out multiple times. It is the only movie that has ever made me cry every time I watch it. Interstellar is a masterpiece that transcends what it means to experience an incredible piece of art, but also a story that will make me cry for the rest of my life, and to this day, that is simply all that matters to me. Now, I've already mentioned his name a few times, but when it comes to reviewing films like this, you just simply have to. Christopher Nolan did what he did with Interstellar, just like with practically every other movie he's done in his career. He is one of the only directors who has ever existed where he can somehow find a way to blend complex storytelling with stunning visuals and innovative filming techniques that marvel some of the old school ways of how filmmakers used to do it back in the day. He's not a filmmaker that solely relies on the usage of CGI, needing a spectacle for the sake of it, or writing his stories to where they do become too much for a person to go along with. He's just complex enough that you can really understand what he's going for. He writes his films well enough to the point where just about any one person can understand what's going on through that man's brain. It might take you a couple of times with watching his movies to get to that point, but that's what makes for great movies, the ones that can make you go back and watch them multiple times. Interstellar fits perfectly within that. I mean, he somehow managed to find a way to use the concept of love to create a time travel movie in essence with Interstellar. Stellar. Many people have said before that that is what the film is about in the end, but he somehow manages to make it work. The man is very skillful with his use of practical effects, which to this day might be what people look to more in how movies are made. Long gone are the days where CGI could just be used as a replacement and people will just go along with it. It is why we can label him as a true visionary of the craft of filmmaking. He understands what works and doesn't, even if he doesn't have the greatest amount of expertise in all areas to where he would be making the decisions for every single aspect of the filmmaking process. He puts together the right teams when making movies to where he can be in that leadership role of not being totally in control. To that point, he really truly did it here with Interstellar. If you'll indulge me, one of the areas I want to talk about most with regards to the technical aspects of this movie is the musical score. As someone who grew up around music, playing music, and making it to a degree, I find that music is an aspect of storytelling that goes unnoticed for some, but when it is truly great, it becomes a character in itself. 
What Hans Zimmer did with this movie might never be replicated ever again, and I don't mean that lightly. His score for Interstellar is the greatest single film score ever produced. As I mentioned earlier, I've watched a lot of movies, but no other movie I've ever seen has had as good of music as this one. There are not many movies out there where you could truly actually consider music to be its own character. The job of a character in a movie is to make you feel something by communicating the story to you. Hans Zimmer's score, Hot Take, might just be more of a character than any of the actual characters in the movie. I over-exaggerate there, don't get me wrong, but whenever I hear that piano theme playing in many moments, or the bass of the cathedral pipe organs during a very pivotal scene like the docking scene, chills are sent down your body in a way that you've never experienced before. When that sequence was happening in the movie theater, I could feel my hands trembling, and it felt like I was locked to my seat, not knowing what to do. A lot of that, of course, is due to the story around that scene, but the music just elevates it in a way that makes it one of the best sequences I've ever seen in a film. Of course, that's not the only great thing that music does. One of the most important aspects of a musical score that must be ingrained in it every time it gets made, it feels like it has to pertain to the setting and themes of the film. Interstellar is a science fiction space movie, and when you hear the score, it sounds like it pertains to that in an authentic way. His score beautifully reflects the film's complex treatment of time and space, emphasizing the ever-present passage of time, echoing the narrative tension between human survival and the vast, unyielding nature of the worlds that our main characters explore as they try to find that place for humanity to progress and move forward in. I could ramble off many more examples within the film where it does this, but I think if I did, I'd be here for hours, and I simply don't have that time. But something else I absolutely do have to talk about is the actors and the characters they play. I just mentioned that actors are the very thing that is how stories are driven. Story doesn't always drive the film, or at least in the way that it does best. It is usually the characters that drive the story. Without the characters, you don't have a story, and I don't think you could see it any other way in the vice versa. Yes, one doesn't work without the other, but to me, characters are far more important to get down on paper so that that way they elevate the story you are trying to tell. All the characters in this movie play a major role to some degree in how their stories are told, even the side ones that might only get five or so minutes of screen time. I don't I don't think it goes without saying, but Matthew McConaughey gives one of the best performances ever put to screen as the character of Cooper. How he or any other actor in this movie did not get nominated for an Oscar to this day will be one of the biggest snubs in Academy Awards history. The film did get recognized in five other categories for a lot of the technical stuff, including winning for best visual effects. But there's no doubt in my mind that two for sure winners should have been Matthew McConaughey for Best Lead Actor and Hans Zimmer for Best Score. We could have a whole conversation about how the Oscars snubbed this movie, but I digress. It doesn't take away from the fact that I still believe that Matthew McConaughey is incredible in this movie as the leading man. Everything that his character is about is so relatable within the context of where humanity is in their timeline. All he cares about is his children and his family while working as a farmer. But once this opportunity comes around for him to actually go and save his children and humanity, he seemingly does not hesitate to take that initiative. Aside from the fact that it would require the skills of his former profession that he never got the chance to fully succeed in as a pilot, he knew that the odds remaining of humanity's survival were low, and he wanted to ensure that his family and his children's legacy lived on as well as the rest of human existence. He cares so much that maybe if they succeeded in their mission, he could come back and see his children again. From that point on, the story only unravels in ways that make it even more heartbreaking and emotional of a story. I would also say that a lot of that weight in the emotion is due in part to the character of Murph as well. These two are the main duo of the movie that represent almost all the emotional weight. The character played by both Mackenzie Foy and Jessica Chastain are both excellent. Mackenzie Foy might be the standout of the movie for how young she is and how amazing she was in this role. The thing that is ultimately so unique about these two characters is that what separates their bond with each other is what ultimately leads to the most emotional moments. As family members, nothing is more heartbreaking than the idea of separation, especially separation that in a way almost lasts a lifetime. It is extremely rare that you will find instances of this kind of thing happening, where family can be separated at one point in their lives, and then what amounts to an insane number of years later, they find a way to see each other again for the first time, and that final scene between the two of them at the end breaks me every time because of that. 
The very idea that these two went through their whole lives not knowing if they'd see each other again, only for it to be resolved in the end by them seeing each other at different ages, I mean, I don't know how you don't cry at that. I'm sure there are some people out there who have probably thought about it already before if they noticed it, but this kind of thing also relates to him and his son, even if to a much smaller degree. The famous iconic scene of Cooper crying at the videos that the kids sent to him is only more heartbreaking when you realize that the very final video that he gets from his son, played by the older Casey Affleck version, is the last time he ever actually sees his son. Most people on first or second watch might not notice that, but over time, when you start to think about things more clearly, you realize that the little things like that seep through. Him reaching out to touch the screen as he was trying to touch the face of his child, when you realize in that moment, will make a man cry. What I find so amazing about how Christopher Nolan writes his movies is that, as I mentioned earlier, he makes sure that most if not all characters, including the side ones, get ample time to be an accumulation of the themes that he writes within his stories. Dr. Brand, played by Anne Hathaway, represents the drive for love that she has with one of the scientists that was sent to probe all the planets in the galaxies that they visited. She also represents the idea that even if Plan A, finding that planet, doesn't go well, she's got a duty to make sure that Plan B of starting humanity all over again does go well. The character of Tom as the son of Cooper, at least the older version, represents the theme of being misguided, a pawn in the post-truth world of this universe. I mean, he didn't even want a doctor to take a look at his own kid and wife, for the fact that they were suffering under the terrible conditions of the dust-filled world that they were living in. He didn't want them to get help in that moment. He was just so focused on being a farmer for his family that all that other stuff just goes in and out. I think that Timothy Chalamet and Casey Affleck played both versions very well, I might add. It is crazy to see how far Timothy Chalamet has come since this role, where he is now one of the most illauded actors in the world. Michael Caine's Professor Brand represents the themes of good intentions, but also mistrust in the sense that he spent his life trying to figure out an equation that would help humanity, but in the end, he knew he could never find the answer and relied only on the plan B to start it over. John Lithgow as the father-in-law to Cooper kids represents the older generation, the one that saw where humanity was going and knew it was not going down the right path. Again, for as little screen time that his character has, overall, he is very good in the movie. You feel exactly what he is to the story, because even now in real life, we can kind of see that from his perspective. You have the two robot characters with Tars and Case, who are Two underrated delights. Everyone here knows that a movie does itself well when it gives you great robot characters. Case doesn't do a whole lot of talking in the movie, but Tars represents a great amount of levity to many situations. A sense of humor to his character, but also an aspect of reality where you know he is important, but also expendable to help the mission. Which is why I'm glad that they kept him alive at the end of the movie to have him follow Cooper in his journey to find Dr. Brand. A much more underrated character that nobody really ever talks about in this film is Romilly, played by David Giassi. He represents your typical scientist that knows as much as he does about the science of black holes and the universe that they went through into to help find that home for humanity. On a profession-based perspective, most people cannot relate to him just because of how much he knows. But from an emotional perspective, I think just about everyone can understand what he's going through. He's worried about the mission at first because he's going to space. At the same time, what he goes goes through after our main characters visit the first planet is heartbreaking. For almost 23 years, he had no human interaction. If you notice in the scene where Cooper and Dr. Brand come back to him in the Endurance, he is touching his hands, which represent his lack of touch to another human being, so that he has to touch himself. It is that very concept of time and relativity that puts this movie in the position that it's in when playing with your emotional heartstrings. And then finally, you have a character like someone who considered to be the villain of the movie, which is Matt Damon as Dr. Man. Again, a character that represented good intention to sacrifice himself for the good of humanity to find a world where they could live on. But then, he became the coward and wanted to leave what was left of humanity behind. A man that would hurt humanity and lose his humanity all at once with what he does at the very end of the movie. When I mentioned the idea that this movie is a representation of all the existence of humans and what they represent, you see that within every character. I seriously do not know how Christopher Nolan was able to write this so well, where 
where you can just understand everyone, even if, say, they may not be relatable to the Watcher in a matter of speaking. You combine this with the fact that you had incredible actors playing all the roles of these characters. It is just a recipe for some of the best acting and character development I've ever seen, as I said already. As a way to end off this film analysis, I want to speak to closing with why Interstellar is an important movie, aside from the fact that for the last however many minutes, I spoke to why I believe it is the greatest film of all time. At its heart, Interstellar is about connection. Connection that can span across time, space, and many different generations. Each and every one of the characters represents that look on the world that Interstellar wraps itself in. It invites us, the audience, to ask those existential questions about our place in the universe and the future of the human race. In essence, Interstellar reminds us that while we are just a small part of an enormous and puzzling universe, our ability to love and push the boundaries of knowledge makes us capable of transcending even the greatest challenges. That's what the story ultimately represents within this movie. It stands as a cinematic reminder that the journey of discovery, whether in science or in life, is what shapes our legacy. All of what I said in this analysis is not enough to describe that experience. I truly don't know if another movie like this will ever get made again, but like how the movie deals with the concept of time, it will last many lifetimes and we will forever be grateful that it does exist. So there you have it. That's my film analysis of Interstellar. This is one of the most important videos I've ever made since I started doing this stuff years ago, and I really want to hear all your thoughts on the film and what I had to say about it. What do you all think? Leave your comments down below and let's have a nice and respectful conversation about it. Thank you for stopping by my channel. If you want to see more moving forward from me with regards to film and television and you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe if you are new here and turn on that notification bell. I'm trying to build a community on here and your support would be greatly appreciated. That's a wrap, folks. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day, and I will see you all soon for the next video.